Early last week, Bethesda invited me to play Redfall early. I drove up to New York City and had a 90 minute hands-on session with the game. And spoilers, I was actually quite impressed with what I played. There were quite a few surprises during my experience with Redfall that made me feel a bit differently about it overall. But also an important disclaimer, although this video isn't sponsored by Bethesda or anything like that, I mean, they don't even know what I'm going to say in this video, whether I'm going to tear Redfall apart or talk about how much I may have loved it, but it is imperative to disclose that they did pay for my gas and parking at the event, as well as there was a general per diem given out to attendees for food and things like that. So as you do watch my impressions after a 90 minute hands on, you should absolutely keep that stuff in mind as it could bias me in some way. With that said, if you haven't been following Redfall, it's almost like Far Cry, but vampires and actually it's more of an apocalyptic setting. Most of society has been wiped out here. The game is being made by Arcane Austin, the team behind both Dishonored and Prey, which is a pretty good start to whatever Redfall is going to end up being. One of the pretty cool things about this event overall was how free it was. They did a short presentation about the game and showed us this new trailer that just dropped, but after that you literally just walked over to a computer and were able to start playing. You are able to pick any of the four character options that you wanted and then had complete free access to the open world to do whatever you want. There were zero restrictions on the actual gameplay, although unfortunately we were not able to capture footage, so the footage you're seeing in the background is what Bethesda provided to me or other publicly posted footage. I couldn't actually show you what I did during my session, and we jumped into the game around level 7 or so, so it wasn't actually from the start of the game. The first thing that struck me, and it struck me really hard about Redfall, is this is a legit open world. Like in the typical open world game fashion, I was running off to go do some mission somewhere, and after 90 minutes of playing, I never did that mission, because there are so many other things to distract and entertain you in the world of Redfall. As you're running through infested Massachusetts, you're going to very quickly find a bunch of side activities here. This wasn't too an obnoxious just degree, didn't seem like there was too much side content, but just a healthy amount. There's plenty to do. You might stumble upon a bunch of vampires holed up in a house somewhere, and you're gonna have the option to clear it out. Or you may even find some trapped survivors that are surrounded by vampires that you'll need to break out and rescue. As well as there's going to be a bunch of main and side story missions scattered all throughout. It seemed like there was some sort of mechanic to clear out the vampires that control certain segments of the map, so you could basically reclaim those segments of the map for the survivors, but in my 90 minutes I didn't mess around too much with that open world mechanic. And one of the surprises for me with Redfall is it's not actually just vampires here. Vampires are going to make up a good chunk of the enemies you'll encounter. There's going to be things like the generic vampire, but far more interesting were the wide array of specific types of vampires that you could encounter, each of these having their own unique mechanics and abilities around them. I saw a ton of abilities on display during my 90 minute play session, ranging from vampires who could teleport around you to some others that would suck you in, there were some that had a shield that you had to specifically get around to damage them, and even these weird sniper vampires I encountered and died to at one point. It felt like the game was doing a really good job at vampire diversity. At the same time, if after 90 minutes the vampires were already getting stale, that'd be a pretty massive red flag, but in general it seems like things were off to at least a healthy start. I found quite a few different types of vampires, and if that trend continues at least somewhat throughout the rest of the game, I think that's a really good sign. A lot of the variations were really fun and interesting, and it made the open world experience as a whole a lot more interesting because you kept stumbling upon different things. But as I mentioned before, this isn't just vampires. You'll also be able to find some human cultists that are all around and worshipping some of the vampires in the game. These are far simpler, they were basically just your generic Fallout Raiders. I didn't find any unique mechanics with the cultists, it was just a weapon and they were shooting that weapon at you. But whether you're fighting a cultist or really just a human in general or a vampire actually really matters, there's a pretty big difference here. Because while you could just shoot a cultist to death, you actually can't do that with a vampire, at least with most weapons in the game. They showed the staking mechanic in the trailers already, but I didn't actually realize how big of an impact this would have until I was actually playing. When you get a vampire to 0 HP, they're going to go into the solid, almost crucified form, and you will have to run up to that vampire and use a melee attack, specifically with a vampire stake, to finish them off completely. Because if you don't, they will start regenerating and basically respawn with full HP, or I'm pretty sure it was full HP. This can get pretty difficult for a couple of reasons. On one hand, not all weapons have a vampire stake attack 
attached to them, so you may have to switch to a different weapon to finish off the vampire. But separately, if you're fighting a large group of vampires, you may end up getting distracted and several vampires will regenerate as you're trying to fend off against another one. There's definitely a couple of experiences where I messed up this sequence of staking a dead vampire, so I had to double kill them over and over. But thankfully, stakes are not the only way to kill vampires, as you're also able to use fire. I found this flare gun fairly early on in the game, and it is incredibly fun to use. You can set vampires or people on fire, and in gameplay terms, this is actually pretty big because a vampire on fire will die. There's no need to stake it. If you just burn them to death, they will die completely. And overall, I was actually pretty impressed with the amount of weapon diversity in this game. There's going to be a ton of modern military options. I use shotguns, assault rifles, pistols, sniper rifles. And it wasn't like it was just one of each. I actually used several variants of each of those, and that could be basically all of the weapons in the game. I wasn't really able to tell, but did feel like there was a decent amount of diversity and variety in those weapons, including some fun ones. Like I mentioned before, we had the flare gun, which I loved, but also this stake launcher, which was epic. You basically fire vampire stakes at vampires or just regular people from afar. It has three shots, takes an incredibly long time to reload, but also will take out a lot of vampires in just one shot, as well as these pretty fun UV radiation weapons. There's this theme in the game where UV radiation will take out vampires. And some of these weapons are almost like a tanning bed pointed in the direction of a vampire and it will destroy their skin and kill them. Very nice. So on one hand, if you're looking for one of those open world games where you can kind of just run around and mess about taking on different kinds of enemies, I think Redfall has that. At least it did for me in my 90 minutes of playing it. It has a lot of those familiar open world mechanics, like some notes and audio recordings you could find, but also other things like lock picking and hacking. I definitely did some of that. Thankfully, there's no mini games associated with these. It's just if you have a lock pick, then you'll be able to successfully pick the lock. And the game even featured some degree of environmental storytelling. It was definitely light on the this, but one thing that did strike me was I went through this church and just found it filled with missing person posters. A lot of these had names and faces on them and it kind of hits you like, oh yeah, wow, this like community just was destroyed by these vampires. As far as how many of the interiors were enterable, I wasn't totally sure, but it was a fair few. I was definitely walking through towns and doing quite a bit from building to building, some of those buildings being side by side. But what was easily the coolest thing I found during my playthrough are these vampire nests that you can clear out. There's going to be a bunch of these all over the map, and I cleared out two during my gameplay session. It's basically just a vampire dungeon that is naturally filled with vampires, and there's a vampire heart at the center that you do have to destroy. But there's very likely going to be some type of strong or unique vampire within, so it's kind of a unique boss fight and challenge. Not really a proper boss fight, but almost a mini boss fight. I thought these were really well designed. It was almost like it was a small town street that had a bunch of vampires move in and started creating all kinds of webs and weird heart related things. It had this appropriately bizarre feeling as you entered into it and like things were genuinely creepy. As I mentioned, to beat the dungeon, you destroy the heart, but this would lead to the entire nest collapsing. But there is a unique mechanic where after you destroy the heart, but before the nest collapses, there's a bunch of loot areas that will open up. So basically, as you're clearing through the dungeon, you're going to find all these little walled off sections that will only open after the heart is destroyed. But then obviously, once the heart's destroyed, there's going to be a timer that kicks on and you have to run out of there. So you basically had this mad dash to get this rare loot in the limited amount of time before the nest collapsed. That was a cool mechanic. Overall, I found these to be interesting and compelling areas. And if they are genuinely a way to get some of the better loot in the game across the entire game, I feel like that's a fun and cool mechanic. But with all that said, it didn't even get me to one of the most interesting parts about this play session, and that is I played solo. With how much of the marketing has been showing Redfall as a co-op experience, I just kind of assumed when I was invited to a Redfall event, I'd be playing with three other people in that traditional four-player co-op. But no, that was actually not an option here. You were only allowed to play by yourself, and it's not really clear if there was some kind of technical limitation, or if this was just a choice to have a bunch of YouTubers and media members show off single-player gameplay when all of the marketing has really been multiplayer gameplay, or at least a lot of it has been. But even alone, this game is pretty fun. There's four major characters in Redfall, and each of these has their own abilities, and it actually seems like this is one of the things they're going to release more of in the future. I don't know if that's DLC or something else, but they talked about more characters coming. But each of these characters has three abilities, as far as I can tell. You're going to have one ultimate ability, and then two minor abilities. The ultimate ability will be recharged by clearing out vampires and picking up this blue stuff, and the minor abilities just have a cooldown, so you can spam them with relative freedom. The character design thus far seems 
is really good. Like each of these are very unique and distinctive characters that have very different play styles and even their own skill trees. I don't know how different each of the skill trees are, but at least for a serious chunk of the skill tree I was using, there are going to be character specific skills, things tied to the abilities of that character. So it seems like there's a healthy amount of differences between each of these characters. I spent around nine skill points during my play session and barely got into the skill options for my character, which was Remy De La Rosa, AKA the girl with the robot. Her cornerstone feature was this robot sidekick you had that could help attack enemies and one of your minor abilities would make it so this robot would distract enemies. And with skills, I could even make it so as enemies were distracted by him, they would actually take increased damage. I thought the robot was cool. I generally enjoy playing those characters that have like a sidekick or a turret you could build. I used Remy's other minor ability far more often. You basically can throw a piece of C4 and then explode it whenever you want. And I had like a seven second cooldown. So I was just basically spamming this throughout my entire playthrough. Unfortunately, her ultimate ability is really boring. It's literally just a healing circle. It will heal you as you stand within it. And although this will probably provide a bunch of utility when you have a group of four people all playing at once, comparing this to some of the other ultimate abilities I saw other people using at the event or even talking to them after the fact, it seems like a lot of the other ultimate abilities are way cooler than the healing circle. But it really did seem like there was a lot of variation between characters. It is kind of hard to gauge how much synergy there'll be as you're using these characters at the same time. I assume many people will play this game co-op, so you may be happy to know that you can actually actually use the same character in co-op. So if you want four Remy De La Rosas as you're playing through Redfall, you do have that option. You could play that way. And I could really see how that could be pretty hilarious and fun. Playing with a group and maybe just getting up to no good, like attaching a C4 to somebody or having four Remy's and all attaching C4 to somebody and having them run into a bunch of vampires and seeing what happens or even just trolling people with this elevator ability. And after playing 90 minutes of Redfall, that was honestly my biggest takeaway. This feels like a really solid Friday night game to play with a bunch of your friends and maybe even crack a beer while you're playing. You have this big open world to explore and experience, and a lot of these abilities are quite compelling and interesting. Although with that in mind, my experience with Redfall was not perfect. There are two major things I didn't love about the game. On one hand, I just had a ton of lag as I was playing. I was obviously playing an early build. They have several months to sort out this issue, but I was lagging pretty regularly. And at points I had brutal stutters. If I was moving around quickly or even jumping over fences, which I liked to do, my FPS would drop quite severely substantially, and I do wonder if this is going to be solved by release. I am hopeful this will be resolved by release, but at the same time, with the amount of lag I was experiencing, I wouldn't be shocked if people on lower end systems may end up having some performance issues. But at the same time, having lag at a preview event is actually fairly common, so it'll be interesting to see how much of this is resolved once we actually get reviews of the game. But now outside of lag, I had basically zero bugs in my 90 minutes with Redfall. And my second issue with the game is the story just didn't really drag me in that much. I did this dollhouse quest we could see somewhat in the gameplay that was provided to me by Bethesda, and it had some interesting mechanics around it. At one point, you activate something, so you are literally trapped in this mansion. You're not able to leave until you figure out a fairly simple puzzle. Along the way, you'll get some spooky ghost type thing. It seems like Redfall will have some kind of scary or spooky mechanics throughout it. And I had the opportunity to get a bit of backstory on these characters, a look into what was going on in their lives previously. I don't know, it definitely was somewhat interesting to see all of these unique mechanics coming together, at least from the story perspective. On the actual quest itself, I wasn't really that compelled. I didn't care all that much about what was going on in the mansion or the story there, and I kind of just wanted to run away and go do more side objectives. Although with this critique in particular, I feel like you should take it with a huge grain of salt. 90 minutes is not nearly enough time to experience this game and its story specifically. I really only did this one quest, so maybe it was just one I didn't like. Maybe a lot of the other quests are a lot more interesting when it comes to story mechanics. I think this is another one where you have to wait for full reviews to get the full picture. But what I will say is during my 90 minutes with Redfall, I definitely experienced a lot of lag and I really wasn't all that interested in the story, but I'm also not that worried about it. There's this weird thing about Redfall where it's like one of those games where I feel like if you're playing this with friends, even if it's not a perfect game, I wouldn't be all that upset. I think I'm gonna have a ton of fun with Redfall. This is definitely one of those open world experiences with a ton of potential for fun. And I am genuinely excited for this game. I think if you have Game Pass, you should 
should definitely try this out. And depending on how the full reviews actually end up going, I could see this being a buy for a lot of people. At the end of my 90 minutes, I wanted to play more, and since then I have actually been looking forward to getting to play more. I do particularly enjoy open world experiences like this, but I think a lot of people do. And after 90 minutes, that was my first impressions of Redfall. Thank you to Bethesda for inviting me to this event, and if you are interested in more Bethesda, you can check out this video where we talk about how modders are actually fixing one of Fallout 4's biggest issues. It's pretty crazy. It involves AI.